Job chapter 1, verse 13 through 20. I do need your prayers this morning. I'm not as strong and at my best, but I know God's power is made perfect in weakness. Job chapter 1, verses 13 through 20. Thank you so much, choir. Y'all bless me today. Y'all bless me. You bless me. Thank you so much. So fitting to what God gave me last night. Job chapter 1 verse 13 through 20. It reads like this. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord thank you you may be seated I want to label these few lines with this thought very simply this morning worshiping while you're wounded Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, sometimes I have to worship while I'm wounded. A few weeks ago, my boo, my fiance, came home from school unusually excited. Because she wanted to tell me about an experience she had with a little autistic young man. This young man is in the third or fourth grade, has autism, and my boo, Brianna, is the music teacher at Meadowview Elementary School, and so the special needs children came to class. And this day was different because instead of them just walking in and being seated, the autistic young man started screaming at Brianna and said, Pete the cat, Pete the cat, Pete the cat, Pete the cat. And and Brianna was trying to figure out, what are you saying? You saying you had a cat? What are you saying? He said, Pete the cat. So Brianna, he was pointing at the screen. He was pointing at the screen, Pete the cat. So she went on YouTube and just typed in Pete the cat because obviously he was trying to tell her something about put on the computer screen. So she went on YouTube, typed in Pete the Cat, and something popped up with a little cat. It was a video of a cat that had a song called My White Shoes. And when you watch this video about little Pete the Cat, an actual animated cat, he's singing a song about the experience he had with his white shoes. The story opens and Pete the Cat had on some fresh, clean white shoes. And he's singing, I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. 
But as the story goes on, Pete the Cat stepped in some blueberries and his white shoes turned blue. And the narrator said, did Pete the Cat get mad? They said, heavens, no. He just started singing a new song. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. He kept on walking and then Pete the Cat stepped in some strawberries. Shoes turned from blue to red. The narrator said, did Pete the Cat get mad? He said, goodness, no. He just started singing a new song. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. He kept on walking and Pete the Cat stepped in some mud. And the shoes that were red turned brown. And the narrator said, did Pete the Cat get mad? He said, goodness, no. He just changed his song. He starts singing, I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Pete the Cat kept on walking and he stepped into a puddle of water. And the narrator said, did Pete the Cat get mad? He said, goodness, no. Pete the Cat just changed his song. He said, I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. And the story ended. You can go to YouTube and watch it when you get home. The story ended and the narrator said the moral of this story is no matter what you step in don't let it take your song and I don't know who I'm preaching to today but there's somebody knows what I'm talking about because life has caused you to step in some situations that you never dreamed about but you have to find the intestinal fortitude and the stable sensibility that no matter what you step in don't let what you step in take your song if you step into a pile of haters just say I love my haters if you step into a problem you got to learn how to sing your way through your problem. Sometimes when we gather in worship, it's not that everything is well. It's not that we feel good. It's not that we want to lift our hands in worship, but we have decided that no matter what comes our way in life, I'm not going to let nothing take my praise and take my worship. Can anybody testify the devil should have messed, he messed up when he left my mouth? If he would have took my mouth, then he would have taken my power. But because I still got a mouth, let the redeemed of the Lord still say so. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord because God is still worthy to be praised. And you've got to learn how to worship even when you're wounded. You've got to learn how to shout even when you don't have a dime in the bank. you got to learn how to tell God you're still good even when I'm surrounded by enemies and haters and trifling family members. Can anybody say God is still good although everything I step pen is not good. Just wake up somebody beside you and say worship although you're wounded. That's what I was trying to tell you. When you come to worship, worship is not for God. Worship is for you. Yeah, when, when Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and they were shouting his praises, the, the men in the town with power said, make them stop shouting. Jesus said, I would, but that would cause a problem because if these should hold their peace, I don't need humans to shout. The sun would take a praise break. The stones would cry out. The rocks would have to say, God is deserving of glory. God that needs your worship, your worship is for you see when you worship you take your mind off of the mess going on and you put your mind on the master who can handle the mess you take your mind off your problem and put it on God's power that's why when you walk up in church turn your cell phone off if Instagram could help you you could have stayed at home on Instagram in the bed but when you come into the house of the Lord forget who's sitting beside you forget who won't shake your hand Forget who won't shout hallelujah. You got to make up in your mind. I'm going to worship although I got some wounds. That's what's, that's what's going on in the book of Job. Y'all know Job, don't you? Job is one of the most unusual, peculiar stories in the entire Bible. Because Job throws off the rhythm of the Hebrew Bible. Job throws off the rhythm 
of the Old Testament because when God talked to Abraham, God made a promise with Abraham. When God spoke to Moses and gave Moses the laws for the children of Israel, God made a promise to Moses. And so the swag of the scripture in the Old Testament is that if we do good, good will happen. If I follow God's rules, if I join the church, if I put God first, if I tithe, if I come to rejuvenate revival, if I go to new members class, if I get in the choir, if I lift my hands doing worship, if I'm nice to my family, if I'm truthful, if I don't lie, if I don't steal, if I don't cheat, if I'm faithful to my husband, then immediately God will bless what I'm trying to do because I'm doing the right thing. So the whole rhythm and river of the flow of the Old Testament is that God will bless who blesses you. God will curse who curses you. If I do good, good will happen. But everything gets turned on top of itself when you get to the book of Job. Because here is a man who was upright, who feared God, who turned away from evil. He was a deacon in his church in the town of Uz. He was a philanthropist. He gave back to the community. He was on the front row with a three-piece suit on every Sunday. He was the first one in Bible study, the last one to leave, the first car in the parking lot, the last car to pull off. He was the one in worship saying amen preach preacher he was the one in worship when the choir sang nobody had to beg him to stand up he stood up and praised that was Job he loved God he eschewed evil he feared God he did all the right things raised his children the right way and bad still happened now in the Old Testament that's not the rhythm of what's going on so when we get to Job we get confused because now we got to wrestle with the question of why does God allow bad things to happen to good people and why do good things happen to bad people if you were in seminary that word is called theodicy when you have to wrestle with the goodness of God and, and, and put it beside the evil that happens in the world you are a good God who is all powerful Powerful and omniscient that means you can do anything you want to do God you know everything and you are not present so you're everywhere at the same time so the struggle is if there's an omnipotent God a God who is all powerful and he says he really loves us and a powerful God does not stop the pain that happens in our lives it messes with your mind why is a 30 year old shot and killed God you're everywhere Everywhere. Weren't you there that morning? God, you're powerful. Couldn't you stop the bullet? I, I, I'm sorry. I ain't come for y'all who are super duper saved. I, I'm being real today. Have you ever wrestled with your soul and said, God, what in the world is going on? The sister just joined the church last month. Mr. Joseph Scott walked up to me when we were getting ready to move and said, Pastor, ask us for a seed offering. He was the one willing to sow extra and above tithes and offering, and he's the one in Emory suffering right now. God, something wrong with that? If you want to take some people, God, I got a whole list of trifling Negroes and Negroettes you can take. But why you got to mess with the people trying to do the right thing? And God said, son, I hear all your questions. But see, in your humanity, you don't understand my divinity. Because my ways, are y'all going to help me here, are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. See, you see today and tomorrow, but today ain't nothing. To, in one year, in your eyesight, is but a day in the eyesight of God. God's ways are different. And we got to learn how to trust God even when we cannot trace God. There was a conference call in heaven. Grace was at the table. Mercy was at the table. Justice was at the table. And Satan was at the table. And I, wanna, I want y'all to understand something. We, we really have to work with this thing called Satan. Because he shows up in the first chapter of Job. You, you go, 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 go home and read it when you get a chance. God called a conference in the middle of the table in eternity. And Satan was present. And God had a conversation with Satan. He said, Satan, what's up, bro? What you about these days? What, what you been on these days, bro? He said, I'm going to and fro. 
throughout the earth seeking whom I may devour. God said, Job, have you considered? He said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Job said, I want to get to him. But you have a hedge around him. Church folk don't know when to shout. See, understand this. Satan is not the adversary of God. Satan is an instrument of God. Satan is used to challenge and question and accuse and bring out of us what God has already put in us. So the only thing that Satan did in the garden with Adam and Eve, he said, uh, who told you you would surely die? When Satan had Jesus in the wilderness, all he did was try to tempt him and challenge him and question him. Can you turn these stones into bread? Jump off the cliff. Won't the angels come and save you? Bow down. I'll give you everything. Satan ain't God's adversary. God doesn't have no adversary. So let me just get it straight right now. Satan, I think you're getting too arrogant. You ain't on God's level. God uses you to prove to us some of his purposes. Can somebody just thank God the devil's already defeated and God may use Satan, but Satan is not on God's level. He does not have the victory. God ain't waking up getting ready to fight the devil. He's already been defeated when Jesus lost blood on Calvary. So, so, so Satan, Satan is not God's adversary. Satan is God's instrument. That's why when Paul got that thorn, he said it was given by Satan, but yet it made me pray three times a day because some stuff Satan gives you can actually bless you because it was God who sent him to do it in the first place. Y'all ain't got to say none of that. I'm going to preach to myself. And Satan said, God, I bet you Job is only as faithful as he is because you've been so good to him. He only tithing because he's bawling and shot calling. He only comes to church, God, because you've given him so much favor. Take some of his stuff and let's see what Job does. Let me let you lose your job and let me see how you act then. Gustavo Gutierrez wrote a book on, on Job. And he suggests that Job has something called disinterested faith. Because some of us only serve God with interested faith. We only serve God to get a prize to go to heaven or to remove ourselves from the penalty of going to hell. So the only reason why some of us love God is because we want a reward or we want to avoid something. But, 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 but the writer says, Gustavo Gutierrez says, Job wasn't looking to avoid a hell and he wasn't looking just to get to heaven. He just loved God just because that's what it was. He said, I love you, God. I don't need no more gifts. I don't need no more favor. God, I'm going to serve you. And even when you take my children, even when you take my house, I'm going to praise you because I don't just serve you to get something. I serve you because of who you are. And is there anybody right in the house? Is that your testimony? That if God doesn't do another thing, you are still coming here and tear this church up on Sunday morning with praise and worship because not because of God's hand, just because of God's heart. God, I bless you because of who you are. And Job shocked Satan because when he was stripped from everything, He still worshipped. Can you just slap high five with three people and say, don't let your wounds take your worship. Don't let your wounds take your worship. Don't let your wounds take your worship. You ought to prove the devil wrong this morning. Uh, say, devil, you tried. Uh, devil, you took a good shot. Uh, but I'm not going to let my wounds take my worship. Uh, I'm going to praise you while I'm broke. Uh, I'm going to praise you while I'm crying. Uh, I'm going to praise you through the funeral. I'm going to praise you in the hospital. I'm going to praise you when I'm up. I'm going to praise you when I'm down. I'm going to praise you because you're still worthy. And so, and so, and so, 
I text Job last night. I said, Job, how do you worship even though you're wounded? Do y'all want to know what Job told me? Job said, you got to worship in spite of what you've heard. From verse 13 to verse 19, he got four messages that catastrophe had hit his farm. His children had been killed by an eastern wind. His cattle had been destroyed. And he said, I'm not going to let my children being killed. I'm not going to let catastrophe hit my farm. I'm not going to let chaos in my family take my praise. And when Job heard all of that, it says he arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell on the ground. He said, because although I've heard some bad news, I still got some good news in my soul. And that is, even though I got a lot of stuff taken from me, I still got God. I still got my peace I still got my joy and the enemy can take my stuff but he can't have my soul have you ever had a week where everything you heard was bad news have you ever had a season in your life it was bad news on top of bad news on top of bad news but Habakkuk says even if there's no fruit on the vine even if the field will yield no grain yet will I praise him sometimes you have to have a yet praise in spite of what you've heard he said I worship in spite of what I've heard but then secondly watch this he said, I'm worshiping because I'm still here. Then Job arose and tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground, and worshiped. And this is what he said. I believe he was singing when he said it. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return. He said, when I got here, I didn't have Jack. When I showed up here, I didn't have a pacifier, a pamper, a diaper, ice meal, milk, Burger King. I didn't have a cloak, no Gucci, no Louis Vuitton. I came here naked and God has taken my stuff, but I'm still here. Can anybody look the devil in the face and say, devil, I'm still here. This next praise is not because of my house. This next praise is not because of my car. This next praise is not because of my job. I'm just thankful that I'm, I'm still here. Can anybody just thank God the storm didn't kill you. The lie didn't destroy you. Your enemies lost. The devil is defeated because you're still. Cancer didn't kill you. Diabetes didn't take you out. You're still here. Hey. hey, hey, hey. Sometimes I just thank God I still got my breath. I can still breathe. I can still walk. I can still stand up. I'm still here. And it's by the grace of God. And so, and, and. Naked I came into the world. Naked I shall return. The Lord has given. He's taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you still lift your hand right now and say, God, I bless you and I worship you because you've kept me. He said, blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to worship you in spite of what I've heard. I'm going to worship in spite of what I hear. But last night I'm going to worship because I got some help. Y'all ain't got to sit down. I'm almost finished. I got some help. Bless it. Be the name of the Lord. My situation may change, but his name is going to stay the same. Bless it. 
be the name of the Lord. I'm going to a funeral soon, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Lost my job, blessed be the name of the Lord. I've been lied on, blessed be the name of the Lord. It gets heavy sometimes, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because I know the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And everybody that runs in, they are covered and they are safe. Everybody stand up. When I was in college at Morehouse, I, I got fancy. And I was wrestling with the killing that happened in Newtown, Connecticut. Remember those little babies were killed? Kindergartners, first graders. I'm like, God, I, I just, mm. I don't know. All my life I was told God is good. All the time and all the time. I got to college, I started wrestling with that thing. I said, God, I don't see your goodness. You all powerful, yet you still let evil happen. So I got fancy. I used to tell my friends, I don't say God is good no more. I just say God is God. Not bad. I just won't say God is good. Sometimes God doesn't seem good to me in my humanity. Now for y'all deep folk, you be deep as you want to be. But sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to say God is good because stuff looks so bad. So I start saying God is God. God is God. God is God. But then my aunt died. She went in for a simple surgery to remove a cyst on her stomach. The doctors failed to stitch her back correctly. Some of the chemicals from her stomach got out in her body and literally kidneys shut down. In a matter of days, liver shut down. Body starts shutting down. Auntie, who was perfectly healthy, 57 years old, moved from a regular life to being in ICU for almost a week. And I was asked by my family to do the eulogy for my Auntie Sugar. It was tough because when you look out and see your family, it's hard, it's heavy. And when I got to the microphone, the first thing that came out of my mouth, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Now, how did I move from saying God is God back to being able to say God is good? Because when I looked at the situation, when I got to the podium, my aunt was lying in the casket, but my grandma was still there. My granddaddy was still alive. My mama was still alive. I had seven aunties still alive. I had five uncles still alive. My little brother was still alive. My daddy's mama was still alive. So instead of focusing on what I lost, I thank God for what I got left. And when you take your eyes off of what you've lost and thank God for what you got left, just grab your neighbor's hand real quick. Say, neighbor, I've lost a lot, but I've got a lot left. So for the next 10 seconds, I'm going to worship God for everything I got left. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. He's still good. He's still almighty. If this sermon was for you and you in this house worshiping while you're wounded, get to this altar right now. Get to this altar. God changed my sermon just for you. God changed my sermon just for you. God changed my sermon just for you. I want you to have some courage to walk out. I'm not going to lay hands on you. Nobody's going to be spitting all over you. But at the altar is a place of exchange. Come close as you can. Come close as you can. Come close as you can. Sometimes you need God's power to help you. You're in worship, but you're still hurting. You're in worship but you're still confused. You're in worship, but your soul is not at peace. You're worshiping while you're wounded. Don't be discouraged. Don't be, don't be discouraged. Joy comes in the morning. 
God is not, he's near. Oh, that God is not. You got to stand still and look up. Stand still and look up. Knowing God is going to show up. God is going to show up. Discouraged, stand still and look up. Stand still and look up. Knowing God is going to show up. God is going to show up. He is standing by. He is standing by. There's healing for your sorrow. That's good news. There's healing for your sorrow. For your pain, healing for your pain. It's healing for your sickness. Healing for your sickness. There's shelter from the rain. There's shelter from the rain. Lift your hands and say, Lord, send your healing. For this we know, yes we do. For this we know there is a father He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. There was a bond. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the water. He restores me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Preparest, thou preparest a table before me.
neighbor's hand that you stand beside. With all of your questions, with all of your hurts, with all of your disappointments, with all of your tears, with all of your weight, with all of your worry, with all of your stress, with all of your pressure, you still at church saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked I came into the world. Naked I'm going to leave. The Lord gave. The Lord gave me that job. The Lord gives you your promotion. The Lord gives you that favor. The Lord gives you that elevation. And sometimes the Lord takes away. But even when God takes, bless it. Hey, your situation may change, but his name is still the same. Still Jehovah Jireh, he can provide. Still Jehovah Nisi, he's a banner. Still Jehovah Rapha, he's a healer. Still Jehovah Shalom, he's a peace giver. Still, 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 he's still God. God, we're carrying a lot today. Families are grieving. Families are in shock. Families are weeping. Not just in making all over this world. But we're so glad your name, the world is ever changing, but your, but your name is still the same. Our grandmothers called you and you answered. Our ancestors called on you and you heard us. So we're calling on you, Lord. We're worshiping in the midst of our wounds, just like Job. We don't know why you allow some things to happen. We don't know the ultimate mind of God. We don't understand your sovereignty, but God, we just ask, even if you don't protect stuff from us, just make sure you stick with us. God, if you, if you can just walk with us through it, we can be all right. If you can give us strength to stand through it, we'll be all right. If you give us enough love and enough patience and enough peace, give us that peace that surpasses all understanding, we'll be all right. And God, we're leaving this sanctuary feeling better than when we walked in here because we got a sneaky suspicion and a funny feeling that everything is going to be all right. Now, we don't know it. We just feel it. But our feeling is enough to carry us. And we've got a feeling everything everything is going to be all right in the name of the one who went down on friday and got up on sunday in the name of the one who is the resurrected lord and savior in the name of the one who can do all things well in the name of the one who can turn water into wine in the name of the one who can turn plain stuff into beautiful stuff. In the name of Jesus. Call that name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 I feel chains breaking. Jesus. I feel strongholds falling. Jesus. You're going to Emory right now touching the body of Brother Scott. Jesus. You're touching the body. You're touching the body of those who are sick in here tonight. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We say amen. Amen. And amen. Hug somebody and say it's going to get better. 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 It's going to get better.